Factorizing quadratics can be a little bit trickier than expanding brackets. There are a few tricks and, and things along the way. So the first and foremost, the whole idea behind factorizing quadratics, if I do question 1a with you, 5x squared plus y cubed plus 20 xy squared. The whole idea here is trying to work out what's the same between these two. So we've got an x and a y, an x and a y. I've also got a 5 and this 20 can be factorized by 5. So to pull what's going to come out of it, I'm going to pull a 5 and I'm definitely going to be pulling an x and I can actually pull a y squared because there's actually another y squared here. So I'm actually going to pull a y squared. Okay, so it's just a matter of working out what's the same between them and now what's left. So if I'm dividing this by 5xy squared, 5 divided by 5 means there's going to be a 1, so we don't worry about writing it. x squared divided by x is going to leave us with an x. y cubed divided by y squared is going to leave us with a y. Now we're going to divide this 20xy squared divided by this. So 20 divided by 5 is going to leave us with a 4 x and y squared are just going to disappear. So that's that first factorization. So the trick is trying to work out what you need to take out of each of them. What's the same in each of them? Okay, so that's just straight factorizing, just for memory. Okay, if you're going to factorize a quadratic, so x squared plus 16x plus 63. Okay, this one here is a quadratic. It's also one of the ones where it's almost easy to do, and I say almost. Now I have a very particular way of doing this. Some people like this way, some people don't. Okay, so the factors of this first one here go down this side here. Okay, so the factors of x squared go down here, and then the factors of 63 are going to go down this side here. Okay, so I'm going to write down, I know what the answer is because I know the factors of 63 have to add to 16. Okay, so I know it's 9 and 7. Okay, but I would write down 21 and 3. Um, and I can't think of what else. Yeah, I think that's about all the factors of 63 that'll, that'll do us for now. So these multiply, so 9 and 7 multiply to get 63. And then they have to add to give 16. So factors of 63 that add to give this number here. So in this case, it's x. So my answer is x plus 9, x plus 7. Now I'm going to show you another example of that. Um, about another way we can do it. And I might do 2g. Okay, so I'll do that here, I'll do it beside it. 6x squared minus 37x plus 45. So I'm going to do my big cross thing again. Okay, and the factors of 6x squared, we have a couple of options there. We can have 6x and x, or we can have 2x and 3x. Okay, so we just list all the factors down. Now I've got to list the factors of 45. Okay, and here's where it gets even trickier with this one one of them is going to be negative. Okay. Now I will probably do up a cheat sheet at some point and I might show that um, on another video of what happens when this sign and this sign and all those sort of things. But the bigger one is going to be negative. So I've got 9 and 5 and this time I've got to do 5 and 9. Okay. And then I'm going to do 9 and 5 and 5 and 9 again. And on these two I'm going to do that. So they're all the factors I want to work with. Okay, so now it's a matter of working out whether 2 times 5 plus 3 times negative 9 will get me here. Okay, that's going to be the trick right there. No, no, He's, oops, this is positive, so each of these has to be negative, so I don't need to worry about those two there. So because this is here, is positive, then both factors have to be negative because this number here is negative. All right. So does six times minus five, which is thirty. So I'm just going to write a little thirty minus nine. Doesn't work. Six times minus nine is 
minus 54 and minus 5, still not 37. Okay, so now we swap to the 2. So 2 times minus 5 is minus 10. 3 times minus 9 is minus 27. And we go bingo. That's minus 37. Okay, so I'm picking up those two. And our answer is 2x minus 9, 3x minus 5. Okay, there are other tricks and, and, and things you, you need to know and they're very similar to the um, expanding quadratics ones. Okay, very similar tricks. And they are the dots and the difference of two, sorry, the perfect squares and the difference of two squares. So perfect squares, just as a reminder. Okay, it's the same rule, only this time you're gonna use it backwards. So a squared, x squared, plus two a b x plus b squared. When you factorize it, becomes a x plus b all squared. Okay, and again, the book doesn't give you the minus version of this. So that's the minus version of that as well. And then the other one is the dots again. Okay, so that's still here. And that is if you have a x squared minus b, okay, and you factorize that, you end up with square root a x plus square root b, your book's got that wrong, or my version of the book has that wrong, so check that that's right in your book before you copy it from your book, or copy it from me here, ax minus square root b. Okay, so your book here has an a there, and that's wrong. Okay, so square root ax plus square root b, square root ax minus square root b, so it's just the dots formula again, all right? So that should pretty much get you through. Always look, so it's just some tips, always look for a common factor first and then see if it fits one of your, your shortcut rules down here before you try and do it this way, okay?